Today, I will be reviewing the Seastar S50. I bought it a month ago and I've captured some awesome, some beautiful, stunning images with it. First off, I want to talk about the specs. Um, so here's a cool montage with a voiceover about the specs of the Seastar S50. Key features and specs of the Seastar. 50mm aperture and 250mm focal length. Perfect for deep sky objects like nebulae and galaxies. Sony IMX462 sensor, 2 megapixel resolution. Built-in live stacking, 64 gigabyte internal storage. Altaz mount with auto tracking. Mobile app control, triplet apochromatic optics. Eliminates chromatic aberration for sharper images. Includes a solar filter. Built-in light pollution filter. Enhances deep sky imaging even in urban environments. My experience with the Seastar is just great. It's an awesome product. Now I have a background in photography, video and 3D, uh, 3D kind of stuff. But astro imaging, not that much. And also you just control it with your phone. You turn the Seastar on and you connect with it on your cell phone. And then you go to stargazing. And here you can see what's tonight best and what type of object you want to shoot. It will ultimately go to the object and it will do his calibration kind of stuff. Also making the light, uh, the dark frames and everything. So you don't have to worry about that. And the photos straight out of the Sea Star are great. But the best thing to do is to stack and edit your photos by yourself. Because here you can see the difference. Also, it has a solar filter, so you can take pictures of the sun. Uh, the only drawback it has is planets. Uh, planets are quite small on the sea star. It's more for uh, galaxies and nebulas, but still, you can image uh, planets. Uh, I only have photographed Jupiter. First time seeing Jupiter, awesome. The only downside is, at the moment, is a alt Z mount, so you have some field rotation. The meaning of field rotation is uh, when you look in the sky, a object that you want to photograph is it's turning, so you have uh, field rotation, and that in the end result, the quality of your photo is, is le less good. But I've seen some videos that they are working on a AQ mode, so if there is an AQ mode, wow, that will change a lot. I've tried 30 seconds exposures, but I get a lot of star trails and stuff, so I hope when they release the AQ mode, um, that's gone. But for now, I stick to 10 seconds exposures, and most of the time, and I only have, have used this, this thing for a month, and in a month, we had in the Netherlands not enough clear skies to properly test out. But I've done some images over multiple nights of uh, one object. The photos still not great and I know if I take more photos of the object of uh, more nights, uh, the noise will reduce and the photos will turn out even better. And for the people that don't want to do this, the stacking and the editing by themselves, um, you can directly edit and stack the photos in your phone. I have tried it in a few minutes and also the end result is it's awesome um, but I still highly recommend to learn the whole stacking process and editing the photos by yourself you have some free software it won't cost you any more money and if you want to have a tutorial about it uh, let me know in the comments and I will make a tutorial about that I hope you like this video if you did make sure to subscribe here below I have a lot of videos about Premiere Pro, Blender, uh, After Effects, also astrophotography. Well, this is my first video about it, but I will upload more videos about it. Peace, bye.